Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my weekly deck reviews. I am excited to dive into this week's video because I have a lot to say as per usual, but I just wanted to say if you are new here, weekly deck reviews is a video where I talk about the tarot and oracle deck and other that I have been working with for the past week. I like to work with one tarot and one oracle for most of my tarot practice or my da daily divination practice, the spreads that I do, all that kind of thing throughout the week. And then I like to trade out each week to new combinations. So I tend to pick my tarot and oracle matchups based on whether I have new things coming into my collection that I want to work with, whether I have things I haven't worked with in a while or particular pairings I want to play with. I often tell myself that I am going to pair the tarot and oracle deck somewhat aesthetically, like how they look, but oftentimes that's not the case. So sometimes I have some really different kind of combinations that come up in my rotations. So I'm going to dive right in. This past week I have been working with the tarot fauna. Now this is really interesting because this particular deck I actually anti-hauled and said that I regretted purchasing it. I spent a week with it originally and if I remember I will put a link up to my weekly deck review where I talk about my first week working with this deck. This time was completely different and I'll be honest when I moved into this week my thinking was look at the inside lid oh my gosh so cute. My thinking about this deck was that well it's really adorable like I love looking at it and I wanted to connect better with it, but I felt like the first week it just fell really flat. Now the cardstock on this deck is really, really nice. It's a linen finish. This is what the backings look like. And um, it shuffles beautifully. It feels really high quality. The images themselves are really beautiful. And they've got this sort of playful, approachable, really gentle vibe. And I have to tell you that the otters in the water suit are everything. And I was like, you know what, I really need to give this deck another try. Oh my gosh, and like there's also lots of Easter eggs. Okay, so this card, this is actually the rune Yera, which is the harvest rune, which is really interesting for the Nine of Cups. It's like uh, reaping that sort of reward, that emotional reward of the work put in. Okay, I'm distracting myself. Let me see if I can get back on track. So here's the thing, I'm gonna have to stop showing cards for a second. What I realized the first week that I worked with this was that I was very distracted. I felt like I just didn't give it enough time. Like sometimes you pull cards, at least for me, sometimes I'll pull cards and I'll feel like, okay, yeah, that's the four of cups, whatever. And then I look for like a Rider Waite Smith type of imagery. And if I don't see it, sometimes I can be a little bit impatient. And I think that's kind of what happened with me my first week working with this deck is that I feel like I was a little bit impatient. And so I had set an intention for myself this week working with this deck for the second time that if I was going to let this be the week that decided whether I was going to keep this deck or rehome it, that I really wanted to be patient with the deck and really sit with the cards when I pulled them. And I have to say that I fell completely in love with this deck within the first couple of days. Okay, now I can show images because I got that main point across. Um, I found that as I sat and worked with this deck and w played with the images and really took my time over it, what I found was that I developed an affection for the animals that show up through the minor arcana. They started to feel like they took on a little bit of a life of their own. I started to feel like I understood the storyline that the owls experience in the sword suit or the bears in the pentacles, the foxes in the wands, and the otters in the cups. I started to feel like I understood the emotions and the messages that they were conveying. I really took my time, and this deck required me to really take my time. I really don't like spiders. This card is not a fun card, but it is the devil, so that works for me. Um, and there's actually a different spider that also appears in this card. I actually found that this deck evoked a lot of emotion in me, which I... After my first experience, I really wasn't expecting that, but I feel like a lot of these cards are really, really emotive. And I have to say, this card, completely, I fell in love with the deck partly when I first really spent some time with this card. So on the outside looking at it's like, oh, this kind of looks like it's an ant pushing a flower like up a hill, and it's the chariot card. And when I first looked at this card, I was like, well, it's like perseverance, and it's, yeah, okay, I guess it's kind of chariot. <laughs> 
But the more I sat with it, I was like, dude, that yellow flower, that's the solar plexus chakra. And the solar plexus chakra, I strongly associate with the chariot card. And, and then I just kind of sat with the image and I was like, of course, this is will, this is drive, this is determination. This is, um, you know, instead of a chariot that's riding into the sunshine, we have this ant with this yellow flower and all the symbology was there. I just needed to sit with it for a minute. And then I really, really loved it. And, you know, the same is true of a lot of these. I pulled the hanged man this week and it very much was this message of you need to just wait. Like healing, transformation, progress, it all takes time and you need to sit with it. It's not always comfortable. And I was like, I'm getting some really strong, strong messages out of this deck. And it just, it really started to feel like a deck that I connected with really deeply. This Knight of Shells, the way that this otter is like, I'm gonna get the fish, I'm gonna get the fish. It's total Knight of Cups energy to me. Um, even cards like the Seven of Torches, which was one I struggled with the first time I worked with this deck, because the Seven of Torches to me is about being on the higher ground. It's about standing your ground, um, sometimes defending yourself when you feel outnumbered. And I can even see that, that sense of holding that higher ground here in this image. I love the crow and the high priestess. I just found that I really started to get this deck. And I have to say I owe a huge thank you to Cosmic Creeper because her walkthrough was really what shifted my perspective and was like, I need to spend more time with this deck. I just didn't give it enough time. Um, there's a really neat hidden message in this card, which is our other spider, and this is in the judgment card. Um, the Eight of Rocks, these bears are like finishing up their shelter. And I think this is the other thing, They're, because you have a family of animals or um, a community of, of a particular animal within each suit, if you really spend time with the images, you can actually start to uncover the layers of the story. And I actually spent time with the digital guidebook again this week, and I really enjoyed it for the most part. The only complaint I would say I have about the guidebook Really, there's some there's some like grammatic, grammatical and spelling things that just kind of make me a little twitchy. Probably more grammatical. I can't necessarily remember any specific spelling things. But one thing that bothered me is that some of the cards described what was happening in the card and how it related to the to the meaning of the card. And then a couple of times I would go to the guidebook and it would describe the meaning of the card, but it wouldn't actually specifically reference what's happening in the image. And I found that a little disappointing. I feel like it either needs to always say or just never say. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm really looking at guidebooks to tell me what the artist, how the ar artist sees the image relating to the meaning of the card. And so if that's present sometimes but not other times, that's very confusing. I, I feel like it needs to either, that description, that part of it needs to be in all, be in all of them or none of them. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. I have a dog that's like flouncing. She's like growling at nothing. There she is. You see the little flounce in the back? Yeah. She's having a little fit. Anyway, I really ended up thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. Like this Nine of Rocks. This is right after. So in the Eight of Rocks, we see the mama bear is like rolling the last stone into place to complete the shelter. In the Nine of Rocks, yeah, in the Nine of Rocks, they're actually enjoying the shelter they've built. They're huddled up inside of it. Like it makes perfect sense. So yeah, the only one, this is one image that I struggled with, so I'd be curious what you guys think. If you have a take on this card, leave it in the comments down below because I'm really curious. This is the Two of Swords. And we see these two owls. I can't for the life of me remember what the guidebook says about this image, but typically the Two of Swords is a very still and a passive card. A card where we see a woman usually sitting with crossed swords in front of her heart and blindfolded while she's trying to make a decision. There's a an energy of a stalemate in a way. And this is one card where I still was like, I don't, I feel like this is a very decisive moment as opposed to an indecisive moment. So I'd be curious what your thoughts are on this one down below. That was the only one that I think throughout the week I didn't fully gel with. The rest of them I ended up make, getting a really, you know, really building a relationship with all of the images. And some of them made me feel quite emotional, which I, again, I was not expecting. Um, and I have to say that all week long, I just looked forward to playing with this. I looked forward to pulling it out and doing spreads with it. I looked forward to just seeing it flex its potential in different capacities. So I tried it in small spreads. I did a big spread, you know, a real journaling heavy spread. 
I did my daily draws. I just really, really enjoyed it. So this is not going anywhere in my collection anytime soon. Um, I just felt like it was a very gentle but emotionally evocative deck. Uh, so that's really, that was really exciting because I, I really did think that I was going to be rehoming this deck after this week. So that was a fun experience and I'm really glad that I took the extra time. The artwork is really enchanting. It's very much up my alley. It's got this very soft fairy tale-ish kind of feel to it or storybook maybe is a better way to put that a storybook feel to the artwork and I really really enjoyed it. So I believe this deck is out of print right now. Um, I think there may be some copies still kicking around if you keep your eyes peeled because I think it's newly out of print. Um, I'm not sure when they would have sold out but keep your eyes peeled if this is one that catches your attention. I don't think there are plans to reprint this deck at this point. The Oracle deck that I was working with this week was amazing and it is the Earthbound Oracle by um, Andrew, I think it's Andrew or Andy Schwartz, uh, Skull Garden. This is what the backings look like. These cards were wonderful and they worked beautifully with the Tarot Fauna. I really, really enjoyed using this deck. I did a couple of three card spreads with this deck this week. I also used it as part of my daily draws and I got really potent expansive messages. I really enjoyed this. It's definitely one that I could see as a go-to for clarifying and client readings, a go-to for just diving deep. It feels very balanced. There's some cards here that are negative, but there's a lot of cards in here that are neutral. So a card like, I talked about this last week, I believe, but a card like Growth, for example, you have this jar and you can go, okay, Growth. Growth is a positive card, but then you think about it and you're like, yeah, but this Growth is sort of bottled up. It's contained. It may be, there may be an obstacle to Growth. It may be limited. Um, there's a lot of cards like that where you could definitely take the shadow side in and consider that part of the card as well. So they feel very, very neutral. Um, and I feel like you could easily start, I'm just, I'm not even sharing, I'm just looking at the images myself, how rude. Um, but I really feel like it's simple and it's direct and I feel like there's a lot you can dive into. Um, as an intuitive reader, this is the kind of stuff that just floats my boat because I love being able to dive into the different kinds of, oh, dive into the different kinds of meanings and the different layers that you can pull out of a deck and this one just this one was super fun to use. So this is going to be staying nearby for sure. There's only, I would say, a handful of my Oracle decks that I feel work really, really well as sort of all-arounders, and this is definitely one of them. I would class this deck in the same category as my um, Illuminated Earth Oracle, as my Roots and Wings, as um, my Connected and Free, and my... Um, Oracle of Echoes. So there's a few decks that I feel like you can just, I can pair with any other deck and use it to get really balanced readings. That's the sort of category I'm thinking of right now. Awakened Soul Oracle by Ethany. Um, yeah, there's a handful that I would put in that particular category and this is definitely one of them. So if you like a really balanced Oracle, something that doesn't feel too mass markety. This definitely feels and reads like an independent deck that's got its own unique voice. I really, really enjoyed this. The reading cloth that I used, again, I haven't really been doing much on Instagram, you guys, and I'm sorry, but this is the little reading cloth I used this week. This looked so cute under the tarot fauna. I just loved it. This is like a little bitty guy, and it was just perfect. So my normal daily draw situation right now looks like this. I have a tarot card, which I would put here, my oracle card, which I would put here, I draw a rune, which I would put in the center, and a three-card Lenormand reading. That is sort of what my daily practice looks like, and I look at all of those things combined, and I sort of, and I take a picture of that, and I journal about it, and that is what my daily reflection practice kind of looks like at the beginning of every day. This held everything perfectly, like exactly one tarot card, oracle card, oracle card rune, and three Lenormand cards all fit really beautiful on this little cloth, so I really enjoyed that. I didn't use the back, which is this really nice, like, yellow pattern, um, but I really, really enjoyed this sweet little front side, so that was a lot of fun. Let's talk about 
what I'm going to be using next week. So, oh, well, before I do that, I am still working with the Claire de Lune Lenormand by Anna Turian. I'm working with this again next week before I change it out. So I'll still be working with this next week. All right, the tarot deck that I'm going to be working with this week is an old one that I haven't worked with in a while, but I really, this is another one where I feel like I really want to spend some quality time with it and get to know it a little bit better. And this is the Shadowscapes Tarot by Stephanie P uh, Pumunlaw, Pumunlaw, and the guidebook is by Barbara Moore. The biggest complaint people seem to have about this deck, and I would agree, is that the images just feel really small and there's a lot of detail. I have serious old lady eye action happening these days, so we'll see how I do with this deck. But I really want to give it a try. This was actually a Mother's Day gift for me from the boys probably about eight to ten years ago now. Um, I've edged mine in this like light lavender color to match the backs. I may trim this deck. I don't know if that will help or if it'll just make it feel even smaller. I haven't really decided. Um, but I'd really like to spend some time with it and just see if we can get along a little better. And I'm hoping that spending a little bit of time with the guidebook will help so I have the full-size guidebook. There are sadly not, in my edition anyway, any full color images, but the images are nice and big in the guidebook and that may help me to just get a better feel for the cards. So we'll see. Again, I haven't worked with this one in quite a while, so I'm interested to see how it plays today with me and my reading style so we shall see and the oracle deck that i've paired with it for the week is the sacred destiny oracle by denise lynn this was totally a dustin made me do it this was a dustin modern metaphysic man i had seen this deck going around and once he showed me his copy i was like i need that in my life I need it. It is really, really, really beautiful and I'm super excited to play with it. Um, this is what the backings look like. They are these gorgeous like ocean backs. They are bordered and I'm really tempted to see what this would look like unbordered. But the images are just stunning. So I'm really excited to play with this particular deck. That feels very modern, this one. So we'll see. We will see. I'm really excited by a lot of the keywords. Healing chaos. What a cool image is that? I haven't spent any time with this at all. Literally, this has been sitting in my to be worked with pile for a good couple of months now. So I'm excited to put it through its paces and just sort of see how it reads. Look at this leadership card. Oops. For a mass market deck, this feels really different and really unique, so I'm excited to see how I get along with it. So that is the Sacred Destiny Oracle by Denise Lynn. The artwork is by, does it say on the box? Is Denise Lynn the artist? Author. The art may come from multiple sources. That might be the issue here. Well, in real time, we're going to find out together about the author. I can't find... I can't find any... Oh, all artwork is copyrighted by the artist. Who's the artist? Okay, I legitimately can't tell. Is Denise Lynn the artist? If you have this deck and you know, please let me know. I'll try to see if I can figure that out this week while I work with this deck because I like to know, <laughs> and we'll take it from there. But I'm excited to put, play with this, and I think this and, and the Shadowscapes will go really nicely together, so we will see how that works out. And the reading cloth I'm going to be using is this really pretty purpley loveliness. I think it'll just go really nicely with both decks, and it has a really nice bold black and silver backing, so I think that's going to work out really well. We'll see how we do. And I also wanted to talk again a little bit about my evening practice and what that's been looking like lately. Um, it seems to keep growing and shifting and changing, but right now I'm still working with the Dreams of Gaia. So I have this um, bag that Peggy made. This was a template actually for a new bag design that she's been working on. I think that her finished one is gonna actually have an elastic closure, but this opens up, this is great to keep on my bed, but this opens up into like a mini reading cloth. So it's perfect for by the bed. And inside I've been keeping my Dreams of Gaia full-size tarot guidebook and my Dreams of Gaia tarot deck. 
And so what I've been doing with this deck is I've been shuffling it and drawing a card at night right before I get into bed and reading the entry in the guidebook because the guidebook entries in this deck are massive. They're very wordy. Like this is one of the shorter ones. This was my card for last night and it is the four of earth. Um, and what I do is while I'm reading this at night before bed, I have put, I'll show you what this looks like here, next to my bed I have a little nightstandy thing and I've been using this single card holder to hold my card and I light the little candle and that way I've got the light on the card and I just sit with the card, read the guidebook entry and it's just this quiet little reflection that I do at the end of every day. These messages have been really healing and helpful for me lately and I've been really enjoying working with them. So this is working out really, really well. I also have by the bed, in case that feels a little heavy and I'm getting ready to go to sleep, I need to lighten things up just a little bit. I've also been keeping next to me my Buddha Doodles cards. Now I've shown these once or twice before on my channel, but not a lot. And I feel like I wanna do maybe like a full walkthrough of these for you guys. So let me know if you're interested in that down below. The Buddha Doodles cards are not officially any kind of an oracle deck, but they are by an artist who goes by the name Molecules. And I had subscribed, I guess followed her on social media for years from when I was a yoga teacher and before and she does these really sweet artwork kind of comic things and she did them as like daily I feel like they were every single day on Facebook for a long time and they just have these sweet messages connected this one is sometimes it's okay to go slow they're always very nurturing and gentle messages uh, they don't really call you out. Um, they're just, they're very happy. And this is like quite a big deck. Like you can kind of see like, it's giant. Um, big square cards. And there's a lot of them in here. But what's nice about these is that I can just kind of give them a little shuffle, pull one little card. It'll almost always make me smile. Um, your sacred space is where you can find yourself over and over again. Joseph Campbell. And that's with this image. I actually have a couple of her prints and when I had my yoga studio, I actually had them hanging up in the studio. So I've been a long time fan of her work and I bought these when she came out with them, I think a couple of years ago. But yeah, I like to keep this also by the bed. And if my Dreams of Gaia card feels a little heavy or my heart feels a little heavy at sleep time, I'll pull one of these right before I go to sleep as well. So that's what I've been doing as far as my nighttime practice goes. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to put that down. So that's what that's looking like. I don't know when I will change out either of those. I've been really enjoying working with Dreams of Gaia and I'm just gonna keep working with it at bedtime until I feel a desire or a pull to change it. But for now, that's the one. Before this, I believe I've, I've worked with the uh, Guardian Angel Tarot and a couple of other of my more wordier Oracle decks and things like that. But I'm really loving the just quiet, still time with the Dreams of Gaia. And the Dreams of Guy is definitely not a deck that I particularly feel called to work with like a regular tarot deck. I don't really want to pull it out and, and do a big spread with it, like three cards or even do daily draws for the morning time. I just really like it as a way to sort of reflect and have like almost like a mini meditation before I go to sleep at night. It's just been working out really, really well. Uh-oh, what did I drop? Oh, my Oracle deck. Anyways. So that is it for this week's deck reviews. I would love to hear from you guys. What are you working with? What is your practice looking like? Does it change? Do you work with the same deck every single week? Do you work with different decks each month? How do you do it? What are you working with? Are you liking it? Let me know down below and I'll talk to you all again very soon. Bye!